Hello, my name is Paula Parr and I'm the Principal Speech and Language Therapist working for Oxley's NHS Foundation Trust. My name is Lillian Odim, I represent the Greenwich Parents Participation Forum. An autistic child might experience difficulties with understanding what communication is about, understanding the verbal and non-verbal communication used by others, developing speech or using this flexibly, and understanding things like irony and sarcasm. The typical progression of communication should not always be applied to autistic children. We should be learning from the child and their unique way of communicating. Every child is different and children will present differently depending on the context, the place or who is supporting them. An autistic child might find it difficult to take part in the two-way nature of conversations or other unwritten rules, including listening to and responding to what the other person says, looking at them when they're talking, waiting for the other person to finish before saying something. It's our job to support the young person and respect their way of communicating. They might be very literal in their understanding of speech and could find it confusing when other people use things like sarcasm, idioms or metaphors. Autistic children and young people are often delayed in their speech and language, so they may speak in single words or short phrases and find it hard to express themselves, which can lead to frustration for the child and their family. Autistic children often find it difficult to understand and express their feelings, so they might need additional help. It's often easier for an autistic child to interact with an adult, because adults are more sensitive and can adapt to their way they communicate more easily. They might use a lot of repetitive speech, for example, repeating things that others have said or what they have heard from a TV programme. This is called echolalia. It's important we listen to everything they say because it is meaningful to the child. They might not see interacting with other people as rewarding and they might not have the motivation to communicate with other people. They might not respond to another person when they try and communicate with them because they do not find this interesting. They may not be able to say what they want and that can lead to them becoming very frustrated. And this might be expressed through their behavior. Their communication might develop in a different way. Without the early building blocks which communication skills are typically based, children and young people with autism might not develop strategies, for example, nonverbal or verbal, to communicate their needs or wants or feelings in a way that is easily understandable for other people. People can make communication easier by reducing the amount of language that they use and sticking to keywords and emphasizes those keywords. Others can make sure that they offer enough time for what they have said to be processed. The National Autistic Society recommends that 10 seconds of processing time should be offered. Use a child or young person's name when speaking with them. Use visual supports and or gestures when where possible. Visual supports should be matched to the level of the child. Others should be aware that a person who has ASD might interpret what has been said in a very literal manner. So, it might be helpful to avoid using sarcasm and idioms. It's a good idea to teach the child or young person the meaning of common sayings that are used in everyday life, which might, they might hear at school, college, or in the community. Find ways to listen and enable the young person express themselves. Understand that they are not being rude when they say something honest and teaching rules 
that about being rude would probably cause them stress. Use of familiar surrounding toys to build on communication like use of train, fruits, or even favorite gestures for nonverbal. Working directly with parents and local partnership services, we're creating a series of videos to help and advise families who have an autistic child. In this series, we'll cover everything from how to speak with young people to dealing with everyday situations like dinner time or traveling. We'll give you tips and tricks that parents and professionals have learned through their own experiences and also teach you a little bit about what autism may mean for your child or young person. A very special thank you goes to the Greenwich Parent Care Participation Forum, who were instrumental in co-producing this series alongside professional services.